Hey, what's going on, everybody? How you doing out there and wherever you're looking in from? If you're on LinkedIn, if you are on YouTube or in the Facebook group, it's on and popping because we got a great guest. I'm telling you, I'm so excited. He's in the green room right now, and I just can't wait to bring him on. But I want to make sure that each one of you are on. So I want to go to the comments and make sure that we are rocking and rolling. So yes, I got comments going. Uh, so come on in. Come on in the room. We're having coffee. We're having tea. We're having popcorn. Bring whatever it is that you need to bring it in the room. So welcome, everybody. You're on Hurdlers of Adversities, uh, Inspirers and Maximizers of Pivotal Moments. Uh, this is a great show, and I want to just thank you all for supporting it. It's been a phenomenal to watch the, the growth of it, to see where we can take our lives by the guests that we have on this show. So we're embracing this new normal mindset, right? Because we're amputating our fear, embrace this new normal mindset so that we can win the medals that are in our lives. As of course, you know, I'm a hurdler, so we're always hurdling the adversity. So this show is all about getting you up close and personal to individuals that really are inspiring us and, and maximizing their gifts and then now have started into their life to give something back to others. And that's so, so we're gleaning from individuals. And so I just really want to just thank you all for coming on. Wherever you're coming in from, put it in the chat box right now. We want to know. We want to see where you are so we can shout you out on this this uh, on the show. So all of you are coming in. I want to thank you for posting and resharing this post. We're having great conversations and dialogues. We've had some amazing guests on and the, no exception with the one that we have on coming on today. What's going on? Uh, Arkansas is in the house. What's up? Thank you so much, Tracy. Appreciate you. I hope you had a chance to talk with my daughter because <laughs> um, you got to get her to the University of Arkansas to go to law school. All right. Uh, what else we have? We are headed towards a master class, which is coming up. Just want to make sure that you are aware of that. Please, right now, share the show so that other people can jump on. We can have a great dialogue and conversation. Though folks are jumping in on, on Facebook right now. They're jumping on on YouTube right now. So thanks for doing that. This has been Disability Employment Awareness Month. Now, we have talked to several folks that were in Crip Camp. We had Judith Human that was on the show. We had... Um, uh, John Kemp on the show. So all these folks that were on the Netflix special, we had those that were on this Netflix special from um, Rising Phoenix that was on. So we just want to make sure that we are make, making sure that that's happening. All right, Tracy, thank you for saying that's good. I'm glad you all are connected. Um, second thing, next month is Veterans Month. So we're going to be honoring, celebrating veterans. We have some great folks that are on, some phenomenal speakers, but also those that have served our country. We want to make sure that we are honoring and serving uh, learning from them as they have served us. And then finally, there have been some amazing COVID benefits. I'm, I'm starting to, and I hope you're doing the same thing, tracking the COVID benefits, right? A lot of times when you look at the news, it's all negative. It's all doom and gloom. And so I'm always about the inspiration, right? I, 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 so I'm not knocking what's going on in our country, around the world right now, hearing it and checking it from friends and what's what's happening around that with the, the negativity around it. But the positive thing was... <laughs> Uh, doing these remote presentations, I did four remote pr presentations in one day on the East Coast, West Coast, back to the East Coast, and then wound up on the West Coast. I could never have done that before. So I'm changing my whole business structure, my whole business model around that. So look for the opportunities despite the obstacles. For, so for those that don't know me, just want to just share with you who I am uh, as we're waiting for more and more folks to get on the on the line at 529 in the afternoon. On May 17th, 1994, I was one of the fastest hurdlers in the country, top 20 in the world. And I went across a hurdle, dislocated my knee, severed the artery behind my kneecap, and seven days later became an amputee. Hey, Lynn, what's going on? Thanks. Got Charlotte, North Carolina in the house. Hope you're all doing down, doing well down there with the storms going on. Really appreciate you being on. Saw that what you were doing uh, with the Women's and Business Network, phenomenal. Uh, so thank you for uh, for always checking in. So, and then what happened was after the injury happened, you know, you kind of sitting there, what's, what's, what happens in life? I started to go down this downward spiral with my identity. Who am I now? Was well, my wife, Alice, who said, you know what, John, we're going to get through this together. This is just our new normal. And I began using those words to retool my life. Now, most people use the term the new normal as a destination. I guess we're at the new normal or maybe things will get, when things get back to normal. 
Well, I don't use it as that because new, when it's defined, new is no prior point of reference. So how many have been through COVID before? None of us. And so new is no prior point of reference. And then normal is the everyday typical occurrence of a thought or an action. So what are we doing every single day to shift, to pivot? It's not a destination. It's only a plateau by which we grow. And so I began to grow, swam for physical therapy, and made the Paralympic swim team 27 months post-amputation. And then I wound up running track and field and getting back on the track and won the silver medal over in Sydney, Australia. And uh, that birthed on some other things, working with the United States Olympic Committee, building out the Paralympic Military Sport Program, which turned into Warrior Games. Warrior Games then birthed Prince Harry's Invictus Games. And so here we are right now, always trying to give back into the circles which we have come so that we can impact more lives. So with that, let's get ready to get in here. Thank you so much. We got Tracy on. We have uh, Lens on. Who else is on? Put that in the chat box. I want to see who's on with us today. Usually it starts picking up a little bit. So I want to make sure what the, the last time we we're on, StreamYard gave me a notice that said that, oh my gosh, we had some troubles and some glitches. So I want to make sure that everybody gets a chance to speak. All right. So the guest I have on is just one of these remarkable individuals. I mean, he is in Speaker's Hall of Fame. He is just an incredible uh, giver and a gifter of his talent. And I want to get into the conversation today with him because he has got so much to share with us. So the question I have for you is, who played in the NBA, is now a business coach, motivational speaker, and a homeboy from the west side of Chicago? What's up? What's up? <laughs> I think he's from the south side. I'm from the west side. So who is that? Put it in the chat box. I want to know who you think it is. My guests are unconquerables. They're the unconquerables. They're the inspirers and maximizers of pivotal moments. And my guest today is no exception to that. He is retired athlete who's gone from college reserve to NBA starter, from retired athlete to motiv motivational baller. By that, I mean a Hall of Famer for speakers. He is the owner, operator, and CEO of the Bond Group. What? Ladies and gentlemen, the 6'5 shooting guard from the University of Minnesota and Collins High School in Chicago, Illinois, who played with the Dallas Mavericks, the Utah Jazz, and the Detroit Pistons, the monumental motivational maverick, Walter Bond, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, John, man, that is, man, that's exciting, man. I'm, I'm ready to go run and do something right now. You got your life, man. <laughs> And I'm from the South Side. From the South Side, I, all right. And I went to school on the West Side. So uh, we, I thought we about yeah, that. You went to Collins, and I was like, "That's Collins on the West Side." That's right. And also went to a school called Crown Academy. Crown Academy, which is right around the corner from Farragut, um, near K Town. Um, but my dad was a principal of both schools, so I went to my dad's high school, both on the West Side of Chicago, two different times. Wow, that's 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 amazing. So I I took I was, I was in on the West Side deep. <laughs> like you know, where it said WGCI, yeah, Oak yeah, Park, Chicago, yeah. Oak Park's not in Chicago, but I grew up in Oak Park, close to close to it. Okay, so right Oak Park River Forest High School, Oak Park River Forest High School. Hey, hey, yeah, OPRF, go Huskies. That's right. That's yeah. right. So thanks for being on. I really appreciate you because you know you have done so much with your career, not just with inside a sport, but you have parlayed that into you know other opportunities, but. I want to, I really want to start with, you know, you, you did a lot with, okay, so you're, you play with the Mavericks, uh, you play with the Jazz, you play with the Pistons, but you weren't even drafted. You weren't, no. how does that work? How does that even happen? Well, you know, the truth is, um, you know, the, the whole journey to the NBA for me was really preparing me for my purpose, mm -hmm. which I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. And all of the failures, all of the setbacks, all of the challenges really have prepared me for this time. And I want to make a statement, and John, you've lived it out. You're, you're the example of it, that adversity will increase your value if you let it. Yeah. And sometimes when adversity hits, you know, we feel sorry for ourselves and why me? And sometimes we get mad with God. Sometimes we get frustrated. Sometimes we get angry. And all those things happen to me on my journey to the NBA but the truth is, all the adversity that I faced increased my value. I'm sure you would agree that the adversity that you faced increased your value. Look at you. You're global. I mean, you're global. And so I'm pretty confident that 
although you had some adversity hit you, you know, you turned that lemon into living AIDS. And right now, think about how much respect you have right now. Think about all the lives that you're touching. Think about all of the impact that anyone can have if we allow adversity to increase our value. And, and I can say that now at 51, <clears throat> and it sounds easy, but when you're going through it, you know, it's not fun. But <laughs> now I can relate to people. You know, yeah. I can relate to someone who's, who's been fired or filed bankruptcy or got divorced or got diagnosed with a disease. Or I can relate, you know, because I've, I've been I've struggled before. Yeah. I've been blindsided before. I, I've had ups and downs and I've had people not believe in me and, and, and have obstacles. And so now, you know, I'm able to relate to people, but most importantly, help them recover and get back on the track to their success. Yeah. Do you think that empathy is one of the keys that might be missing right now with, with, with people, a lack of empathy? Or do you think with COVID that's hit and, you know, the pandemic that we're starting to understand how to be more empathetic? Well, you know, that's a great question, John. And, and, and I think some people have and some people haven't. You know, if you really look at the phenomenon of social media, social media has really brought out a lot of critics. You know, you get a lot of harsh, negative people that go for the throat because it's easier to type it behind a computer than to say some things face to face. <laughs> but at the same time, yeah. you know, social media has also allowed our, 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 our nurturers and all of the people with compassion to come forth. And so, you know, at the end of the day, um, I think it's important for us all to grow and mature, but also have that compassion because, you know, when, when you failed and when you're thankful and understand that at any moment, you know, any of our lives can change. And if nothing else the coronavirus has taught us is that one, we are all connected. We are all connected. We mm -hmm. are our brother's keeper, okay? Mm -hmm. But two, that we can make a difference, you know? And to me, just wearing a mask, for example, if that's gonna protect you and keep you and your family safe, I'm gonna wear it. Why? Because I wanna protect you. You know, it's not about me, right? And so, unfortunately, you know, we live in a world where people got their opinions, um, sometimes lack compassion. And for you and I being thought leaders, if we can just say one thing that can increase someone's value, or get someone closer to their potential. I've never seen someone angry be able to achieve and sustain mm -hmm. success. I just haven't seen it. I haven't seen anyone bitter be able to achieve and retain success. And so success is really a mindset. And when that adversity hits, don't get bitter. When that adversity hits, don't get angry. Yeah. You know, don't, don't get even, right? Just take it as an opportunity to get better. And adversity will increase your value if you let it. I, I like how you're saying that the adversity increases your, your value. One of the things that I have, have, have often said, and I, I, had, I did a, a TEDx on it, was on this word tolerance, right? So people begin when, uh, I, I think tolerance is not a word that in the definition brings us closer together, that I'm going to be more acceptant of your opinion and, 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 and things that you're saying. Tolerance is really hierarchical. Uh, so what I mean is that I will tolerate you based upon how much I want to stand you being in the room with me, right? I don't, I don't necessarily value your opinion. I just, I just, I'll just, I'll just tolerate you for the time being. Uh, when you look at that and we look at the kind of times that we're in right now, and you look at your client list that you've been working with, uh, do you find that people are more kind of just holding bay and just, and just, tolerating or do you find that they are beginning to shift into this value proposition and and really seeing the value that people are bringing to the table you know one thing that i preach really is about the shark mindset and mm -hmm. I've, I've been teaching this you know ever since my book, book swim came out is that success is about a mentality it's about a mindset you know i'm a chicago kid you know chicago there's tons of good ball players in chicago that didn't get out of chicago right. they never got out to play around why they're really good right right they just 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 didn't think right, didn't go to class, bad attitude. You know, so right now you gotta have the right mindset. And mm -hmm. and when I talk about the shark mindset, you know, I'm always preaching what I call the sacred six from the book. And the first of the sacred six basically is sharks never stop moving forward or they die. Right. The way a shark breathes is through the water and moving forward, they get oxygen in their lungs. That metaphor is powerful. Just by moving forward, you're gonna get life, you're gonna get energy, you're gonna get some oxygen, 
You know, so when your leg got 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 mangled and, and, and you had your incident, you got up and you moved forward. And before you knew it, you're competing again. Yeah. You know, a different not, not right away. It hurt. <laughs> yeah, right away. Of course, it was hurtful. It was painful. You probably thought like, why me? Oh, my God, my life's about to change. Yeah. But you kept moving forward. That's the sharp mindset. Mm -hmm. You know, how many people do we know out here that, man, I got divorced and my life will never be the same. Yeah. I got fired and my life will never be the same. You know, the coronavirus, it'll never be the same. 9-11, I'll never be the same. You know, we got to keep moving forward. Yeah. No matter what kind of adversity hits you, as Les Brown would say, if you can look up, you can get up. Yeah. Keep moving forward because I'm telling you, that's how you get build charisma. That's how you get that inner strength. In order to be successful in life, you got to have muscles, right? In order to build muscle, the muscles won't get tired. It's going to get fatigued, but you got to go back and lift again. And that's how you build muscle. And that's how you build capacity that we've all had setbacks, but you can't quit. You know, on my way to the NBA, I didn't start in college. I broke my foot twice and I still made it. If at any moment I would have stopped moving forward, I wouldn't be here today. I never would have been able to live the life that I have now. And so I'm not telling you to do something I haven't done. Right. We're not telling you to do something that John hasn't done. Mm -hmm. Anytime adversity hits you, if you can look up, you can get up, keep it moving forward because all things work for your good if you let it. Yes. Tracy says, amen, because you preach it. <laughs> She's on it. Absolutely. Um, I, 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 I like how you, you know, when you, we talk about the amazing Les Brown and, you know, talking about if you can, you can look up, you can get up, right? Um, a lot of times, you know, folks don't begin to move and we sit paralyzed, even though the world is still moving. So even in that, you're going backwards because the world is advancing forward. If you're just standing still, you're going backwards. Time is moving past you. Um, and in building this resilience muscle, I'd look at resilience, this word, as, as 10 letters. These 10 letters equate, to, for me, 10 hurdles in a hurdle race. Uh, so I remind myself of what I have to do every single day. If I'm kind of like this morning, I was like, man, I was, it was hard to get going this morning. I was, I was trying everything, throwing everything at the kitchen sink, trying to get myself moving this morning. Didn't even do my walk. I used to do a walk in the morning and I just had to remember that that R for me in resilience is the ritual. What am I doing every single day? That's going to push me to that next level so that the, the ritual becomes a rhythm. And then the rhythm will then elevate me to a rise in, in my life. For you, what what are you doing? You know, when kind of COVID hit, everybody, every, all business kind of just shut down, especially in our industry. What was your mindset in that moment? Uh, to to did you did you have a moment where you you thought you might be swimming backwards like a, <laughs> a shark? Or did, no, 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 not at all, not yeah. at all. Because again, sharks only look up; they never yeah. look down. So you know, I, I live by this. You know, and that's how I made it to the NBA. I kept it moving forward, you know, no matter what happened, I just kept kept it moving. And the truth is you can outwork it. You can outwork the competition. You can overwhelm mistakes just by work ethic, but also we gotta be positive. And that's yeah. that's that's sacred uh, six number two. Sharks only look up, they never look down. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a powerful metaphor because you gotta be positive. So the way I looked at it, John, you know, I played high school basketball in Chicago. And the day after I graduated from Collins High School, my college basketball coach had me fly to Minneapolis and get on college campus and start preparing for the Big Ten. So I've been on the road since I was 18. I'm 51. This is the yeah. first time I've been able to be home since I was in high school. Wow. So I'm like, Man, this is a beautiful thing. I get to sleep at home in my bed every night. <laughs> I get to cook. I get to have quality time. I don't even know where my suitcase is. I've been living out of suitcases since I was 18. I really appreciate that. But two, for years, I've been doing about 80 to 100 keynotes a year. I mean, I've been on the road, road warrior. There's been a lot of things I've been trying to get around to. You know, I've always had a respect for Dale Carnegie and, and Stephen Covey and John Maxwell, these content creators. And I've had a bunch of content that was half-baked, a bunch of trainings that needed to get finished. My wife and I looked around and said, man, this is a gift of time we might not ever have again. <clears throat> We've been finishing off trainings and, and building curriculums, and it's been amazing. Yeah. And so my expectation is when this thing is over, we're going to have more capacity 
We're going to be a better organization. And so I'm really like, thank God for this gift of time yep. that the coronavirus was created. I know a speaker, you know, Ross Bernstein, he lost 30 pounds. He mm -hmm. called me, he says, man, I'm going to get my butt in shape because we'll never have this kind of break again as a speaker. So he went and started running marathons, right? So he lost Great. 30 pounds. So my challenge for anyone at home, the worst thing you can do is nothing. And one day, John, I had two CEOs call me the same day. And it was like God really showing me the difference. My biggest client is Jersey Mike Subs. The founder, Peter Cancro, called me. And one of the, 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 the um, um, methodologies of the Sacred Six is that sharks are made of cartilage, which means they are flexible. Mm -hmm. They know when to pivot. They know when to change. They know when to shift. Peter Cancro, founder of Jersey Mike's, called me and said, Walter, you're right. You know, he bought everybody one of, one of my books, so they knew the book. And he was like, man, we're going to pivot. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to do this. Right away, as soon as the coronavirus hit, as yes, soon as we yes. start shutting things down, they're up 18% from last year right now because he pivoted right away. That same day, I had another CEO call me, a guy up in Canada. He says, Walter, you know what? I've been online watching all your videos. And I got one video called The Pity Party. I've been watching your video called The Pity Party, man. <laughs> What do you think? When is this going to be over? Is there going to be a virus? Is it? I thought to myself, like, man, I got one CEO who never stopped moving, who only look up, never look down, who pivoted right away. I had another CEO call me the same day, basically throwing a pity party, sitting around doing nothing, trying to figure out when we're going to get back to normal. Who do you think is going to make it? <laughs> who do you think is going to be? Number <laughs> right? one to be number so, one. So, so the message is uh, yeah. the worst thing you can do right now is nothing. Yeah. <laughs> what can you do to position yourself better through this coronavirus? So when it, when it's over, you'll be in a better position than you were before it started. Yeah. Uh, and and then the pivot. You're you're exactly right. Um, you know. So I had a I had about a I would say a half a day. I was like, what is going on? And then it was time to to move right. What and what I what I decided, I decided to get really close to the the mission statement, right? That I that I wrote for the the vision for the company, and I wanted to. It was a good it was a good test to see, could it stand on its own? If I never made another dime in this, would I still need to put this value that's out there, right? And and so that became my my really my north star. Uh, was to say people need this value more than ever right now. And whether they got cash or they don't, that has nothing to do with me being able to deliver and articulate it. So that's that was became the choice number one. But the thing is, when you talk about these pivots, you know, you make these transitions. And so I want you to help people right now to understand the transition they have to make. So for example, you go from high school Next day, you're in college. You're working hard, and then you make your pathway to MBA. And then after MBA, you're now successful as an entrepreneur. Talk about those transition moments and how we can learn from them. And I would love for you to put it in your in, your, in the six sharp mentality as well. Well, you know, John, simple. You know, first of all, I'm just very thankful to have good parents. You know, my mom mm -hmm. and dad were very instrumental in basically creating a value system in the kids. And so I'm the youngest and my uncle played major league baseball. My sister played college ball, won two national championships. My dad's in the hall of fame in his college for basketball. So I came from that family where we were all really good athletes and I'm the youngest considered the best athlete. And my dad made me write a goal down when I was in high school. Basically, what do you want to achieve in life? And so at 16, 17, I wrote on a sheet of paper, I want to play in the NBA and I want to make more money in business when I'm done playing sports. So for me, those goals created pressure. Now, my first book was all but stink. How to live your best life and eliminate excuses. And I devoted a whole chapter to setting goals that create pressure. You know, a lot of people don't set goals that create pressure. You know, you set a little goal, like I want to lose five pounds. It's not a it's not gonna create pressure. And so by saying in high school, I'm gonna play in the NBA, that created pressure. I also said I want to graduate college in four years. Mm -hmm. That created pressure. You know, at the University of Minnesota, the average student took five years. So for me to say, look, I'm gonna play in the NBA and I'm gonna graduate in four years, 
that created pressure. You know what I would do? I would take 12 hours in the summer. Right? My team was like, what are you doing? I said, no, I'm graduating in four years. Why? Because that was the goal. The goal was to graduate in four years. Yeah. I wanted to do that in high school. My dad taught me, you take out that goal and look at it every single day. And by looking at that goal every single day that created pressure, it forced my activity to change. And so anyone, man, create some real goals that create pressure, and don't you give up on that goal. You might have to change your activity. You might have to change your strategy, but don't change the goal. Yeah. And that's what kept me going, honestly. I never started in college, John. I yeah. came off the bench. In my senior year, I broke my foot twice. Hmm. And I almost quit, though. I'm not going to sit here and, 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 and not be honest. I almost yeah. quit because I didn't start in college. I broke my foot twice. I only had seven points a game. My old, man, my old man called me. I was about to take a job as a hospital administrator in Minneapolis. I kept my nose clean. You know, all the season ticket holders and fans like me. And I was going to walk into a great job. And my old man called me. He was like, I'm proud of you. Uh, congratulations on graduating this spring in four years. But are you good enough to play in the NBA? And I'm like, Dad, you are tripping. Come on, man. We can move on. It's not a big deal. Blah, blah, blah. And the truth was basketball had had loved me the way I loved it, you know, and it was always frustrating and I always just, it, it just wasn't working out the way I thought. And mm -hmm. that adversity was discouraging me, to be honest. And my old man was like, look, dude, do you think you're good enough? And that was a different question. He didn't say, do you have a chance? Mm -hmm. The question was, do you think you're good enough? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm good <laughs> enough. He said, well, if you believe you're good enough, Go get it. Go mm -hmm. for it. And that just made so much sense to me. And he was like, son, if you can find one job, you can find another one. And see, my dad was a country boy. And he said, man, look, I didn't, I, I didn't come through the civil rights movement and get educated for you to play it safe. I didn't get called the N-word for you to play it safe, right? My daddy was a country boy from Tennessee. He said, man, I busted my butt so you can go for it. And I was like, dad, you're right. And man, I kept, kept getting better. And I, I ended up going and trying out for the Dallas Mavericks. And not only did I make the team, I started for the Dallas Mavericks. So think about that. I was able to transform my body, my mind, and my ability from being a college reserve to an NBA starter with support. I don't care who you are. As you go through this adversity, you're going to need a squad around you. You know, John, you talked about your wife. I'm sure you had a whole community of people who Absolutely. helped you with physical therapy and helped you with stretching and just got you ready to attack this new world that you had to step into. And when I look at Tiger Woods, for example, here it is, the best golfer in the world, lost his dad. And man, Tiger Woods to me is still trying to find himself. And that's just the, the, the reinforcement for me mm -hmm. that we all need support. I don't care who you are. You need someone in your corner you can cry with. You need somebody in your corner you can confide in, who you can be real with. You need somebody who can be real with you, yep. to be honest with you, to hold you up, hold you accountable. Because success is a team sport. I don't care who you are. You got to get a squad around you. You might say, Walt, I ain't had no dad like you. Got it. You got an uncle? You got a, you got a best friend? You know, you got a pastor? Get a team around you, and you be support for others. You know, don't take without giving. Right? Right. But the right. truth is, success is a team sport. And we all need some support system around us to do incredible things. You know, success is a team sport. And I'm, I've been, I always, I always write notes because I, you know, when you drop nuggets, I got, I got to write it down. So you should be looking over here. That's what I'm doing. And one of the things that I was putting down, and, and there's some people that I wanted, I want to share because they're chatting in here. If you got, you have a question for uh, Walter, put in the chat box uh, so I can see a little bit of it. So let me, let me know. And then also, uh, success is a team sport. Uh, so put that in the, in the chat as well and, and tag um, Walter Bond. So at Walter Bond, if you're on LinkedIn, put that out there. If you're on YouTube and in, in my group, the Facebook group, Amputate Fear, please uh, start start promoting him right now. Let folks know in your circle that we're on live right now. I'll be on for about another about 10 minutes. So just uh, make sure you get him. You get on here because we're, he's dropping nuggets. So, you know, one of the things that you said here is. Uh, you said write this goal, right? So we have Olympian Mark uh, Ladwig is on right now, and uh, he says that's absolute truth. And so Olympians, we know Paralympians know that you gotta you gotta write the vision, um, and, and write what you want from it. But the other thing I think you said, which was really great, and Lynn Lynn picked up on this, and I picked up on it as well, is create a goal that creates pressure. 
And so in this, in the moment when you're creating the goal that's creating pressure, um, are you are you dovetailing that or are you putting it at the same time an accountability partner to make sure you're meeting that? Or is it just kind of you doing it and then kind of reporting out to yourself or are you just or, or somebody else holding you accountable for that? No, it, it's a team. You know, yeah. you, you got to set the, the goal and you got to tell somebody. You know, you got to write it down. You got to tell people. You need to get people around you that can help you get to where you need to be. You know, in, in sports, you got a personal trainer, you got a coach, you got a physical therapist, whoever you need. You know, and you can't do it by yourself. And if you think you can do it by yourself, that ain't nothing but pride talking. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you ask anybody. Beyonce got a squad around her. You know what? John Maxwell, he's got six writers. Okay. Right. You know, I don't, <laughs> and see, sometimes there's a misnomer that somebody's just so incredible just because they're incredible. Yeah, they're incredible, but they got an incredible team and support around them. I mean, how many people does Tony Robbins have in, in, in his organization? So don't try to do it by yourself. That might be the biggest lesson that you can get from today. I've been around great athletes. I've been around amazing business people. I've been around some of the most amazing entertainers. Everyone's got a team around them. So if you're trying to do it by yourself, stop it. You need a support system. You need some people helping you. And if you haven't asked for help, that's your fault. Because sometimes people get to this moment where ain't nobody helping me and I'm all by because you ain't asked nobody. There's yeah. somebody God has assigned to you. And let me tell you something, man. When the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Yes, right. Let me let me give you a quick example. Sure. I went fishing one day, and that's how I got the idea for, for uh swim. Um, I caught a sucker fish, and this is the ugliest fish you've ever seen. The <laughs> captain of the boat took the fish and stuck it on the top of the boat, and I'm a Midwest guy. So I'm trying to figure out how does this weak fish make it in the ocean? That, don't, that, that, that can't make it in a lake in the Midwest. The captain says a sucker fish is flailing in the ocean waiting for a shark to come by. And when the shark comes by, it connects to the shark. And the shark will take that sucker fish on free rise in the ocean and will take that sucker fish places it can't take itself. So I went home and studied sharks. I developed the shark mindset. I went to a keynote in front of 3,000 realtors. And the first time I talked about the shark, the sucker fish, and the parasite. Long story. You got to read the book. There's three kind of people. Sharks, sucker fish, and parasites. Okay. Backstage was a guy named Mark Victor Hansen from Chicken Soup for Your Soul. When I got done with my keynote, he's backstage. Him and his wife meet me backstage, hug me, and say, Walter, you are so talented. Oh my God, man, you got a gift, but you got to write this book and it's got to be a parable. So right away, Mark Victor Hansen, chicken soup for your soul, says, man, you are talented. Built my confidence. Woo! Then he says, you got to write a book mm. and it must be a parable. Mm. Swim is a bestseller. And people say, well, why'd you write it as a parable? Mark Victor Hansen told me to. This man sold a hundred million books. That's right. <laughs> I'm coachable. I'm teachable. If Mark Victor Hansen says it should be a parable, I don't need to overthink it. And so when we work with Wiley, the publisher, Wiley goes, you know what? We think this should be a parable. <laughs> yeah, that's the plan. Okay, good. When you get coaches, when you get mentors, and they speak to you, <laughs> listen. Listen. Man. Follow directions <laughs> and execute with your hard-headed self. Your mama told you that. Your grandmama told you that. Stop being hard-headed. People are speaking to you, but you might not be listening. I didn't even argue Mark Victor Hansen. He's chicken soup for your soul guy. We wrote a parable strictly because he advised us to write a parable and it became a bestseller. See, that I mean, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, uh, I, I love that. And, you know, there, there's so many, I think, you know, when, when, I, when, I've, when I've taken away from this is, you know, how we have to build that network of support. Uh, it's, it's critical to do it. And I have, I have more than doubled my capacity by just adding one person onto my team because I don't want to do what she's brilliant at doing. Uh, so I focus on what I focus on. She focuses on what she, she does, and we can we can move the we can move the, the ship a little faster. Um, I have a question here, you know, because we've been talking about you know building teams and everything, and we've been talking about how we have to push fast and, and the shark mentality uh, and and really swimming forward. 
what is it that you think that you need to improve upon to get you to the next level? Me? Yeah. Easy. Um, you know, for a long time, John, I, I, I was living as a very gifted keynote speaker. Mm. And it's really a gift from God. I mean, my oldest brother's a preacher. It's really just a natural gift. It's nothing that I had. It, it, it just God wired me to be able to be entertaining, connect with my audience, be a great storyteller. Yeah. It was just there naturally. Uh, my next level is going to require me to become more of a teacher because a keynote is a 60 minute experience. And although I'm a Hall of Fame speaker, you can't really transform a life in 60 minutes. You can get somebody thinking different. You can get someone um, touched emotionally. So my next level is going to require me to become a teacher. You know, Jesus was called rabbi. Right? Mm -hmm. I need to become yep. not just a great keynote speaker. I, I need to become a teacher that can say, OK. Now, I entertained you, inspired you, and motivated you as a speaker, but now let's get to work, right? <laughs> now let's get into the gym. Right. Let's talk about leadership, okay? Now let's get into the gym. Let's talk about mentorship. And one thing that mm -hmm. we did with SWIM is that we were able to teach the Sacred Six, but more importantly, really inspired leaders to make sure mentorship becomes a subset of leadership. And when I left sports and got into business, I was blown away because all my coaches had confidence in me. They believed in my ability, but they would help me get better in practice, right? They would work on my left hand, my right hand, and really coach me. When I got into business, I, be I began to find out we don't have a lot of coaches in business. We have what we call fruit inspectors. You know how it is. You go to the grocery store, you want to pick the perfect apple, and if you don't like the apple, you bite it and you throw it away. See, coaching means I see your raw material. And all I want to do is help you get better. And that's my job. And so my challenge right now is, are you a fruit inspector or are you a coach? So when I left the sports world, I was used to coaches. I was used to coaches building my confidence, setting expectation, not criticizing me for my weaknesses, but let me spend some time in the gym and helping me transform my weaknesses into a strength. So when I share these methodologies with business leaders, and after they read the book, they called me and John and said, man, why am I crying? And here's why. Because <laughs> a lot of my leaders forgot to become mentors. Mm -hmm. They just want to lead their organizations. All they care about their goal. The way most of us teach leadership, it's about you, executive presence, how to own a room. Mm -hmm. Teamwork is about us. Right. And when I played sports, coaches was like, look, man, this is us. Right? If I got great, great players, that's how I'm going to look good as a coach. I think the same thing should be true in business. If you want to be considered a great business leader, you got to develop your players. You got to develop your sales guy. You got to develop Absolutely. your CFO. You got, you got to develop your chief development officer. You got to onboard these new talented college kids, right? right? And help them develop and reach their potential. Bottom line is that we got to start transforming leaders into mentors again and to make sure that they become coaches. Love it. I jumped out of my first high school and I transferred to my dad's school. He became not only my favorite teacher, every day on the way to school, my dad would just coach me on success principles mm -hmm. until I got it. And once yeah. he coached me in success principles, and once I got it, I'm not a flunking student anymore. <laughs> now they call me a thought leader. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of transformation, honestly, only happens when you've been around great coaches yeah. and help them develop. Well, you just helped me on that one, too. I have I, I had a place I wanted to go. I was going to go back over to a, a person that I met in the United Arab Emirates. And I was listening to them on how they actually structure their executive uh, offices. Right. So I'll, really quickly, I won't go into the story, but uh, they are training three people for their position. Three people down to train for the position that they have. So even if they don't get that position, they're ready to go someplace else. Uh, and I think that's that's just brilliant. There is a question that came in I'd love for you to respond to, um, and that is from Mark. And he says, how do, how do uh, we reset the plan or reset the pressure when you feel lost and too out of, you know, too out of reach? I'm not sure I understand the whole thing, but I think it's around, you know, we, we were talking about pressure before, right? So in the, in the pressure that you, when you set the goal, you're setting the expectation, you're trying to tell somebody the expectation, and, but you're, you're, maybe you're feeling not, 
uh, adequate. I hope I'm explaining that, Mark, as, as well. But how to reset the plan or reset the pressure when you feel lost or too out of control? What are you thinking? Here's how we do it, Mark. And, and I think I know exactly where you're coming from. You know, it's so easy to get discouraged. It's so easy to get lost. And another thing I learned in sports, each season was its own entity. And when the season was over, it was over. And that's how I lived my life. 2019 was its own entity. For me in business, 2019 was a record year, okay? But 2020 is a new season, okay? <laughs> and, and this season is going to be very different than 2019. When I left sports and got into the real world, people don't look at it like that the way. It's just my life. Instead of saying, no, man, it's one. We have these happy New Year parties, and everybody goes back to doing everything the same way. Not in sports. <laughs> and we have what we call our off season. When the season ends, you go into your off season, and you're able to look back at the previous season and figure out what you did right, what you didn't do right. And then you start coming up with strategies to upgrade, right? To get bigger. The coach will sit you down and say, man, you got to lose 10 pounds. You got to gain 10 pounds. In this off season, we're not going to work in our business. We're going to work on our business. On the business right. And truth be told, I knew what I needed to work on. So, Mark, my challenge for you is, you got to live one year at a time. And when that year is over, once you set some goals to create pressure, if you don't hit your goals, you got to take an off season and basically sit down and say, you know what? Why didn't I hit my goal? What did I do right? What didn't I do right? But more importantly, what do I need to do better in 2020, 21 to make sure I hit my goal next year? Live one year at a time and don't let what happened this year carry into next year. Let each season be its own entity, and you got to take what I call an off-season break every year at the same time and evaluate. Be brutally honest. Keep it real. Keep it 100, whatever you call it, but sit down. Could I did that in college. My freshman year, my coach sat me down, and I said, Coach, what do I need to do to play in the NBA? Well, you can't run. You can't jump. You can't shoot. You can't rebound. And I was like, okay, Coach. <laughs> this is what I told him, though, John. Next year, I'm going to be your most improved player. Yeah. And he confirmed everything I already thought. And each year in my offseason, I would have that dialogue. Coach, what do I need to do? And every year I got anywhere from 10 to 20% better. And within five years, I was transformed into an NBA ball player. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Oh, my gosh. I could talk to you all afternoon. Um, this That's really good. Lynn is uh, just promoting the heck out your book. Uh, so <laughs> Swim, how to... How a Shark, Sucker Fish, and a Parasite Teach You Leadership Mentoring and Next Level Success by Walter Bond. Putting you out there. Lynn is with uh, Diebold Nixdorf uh, out in um, the Ohio region there and just a phenomenal, amazing leader. Uh, so we had her on the show as well. And so she's just always just one of those people you, just, you guys got to know. You got to, got to know that one. Uh, so thanks, Mark, for the question. Really appreciate that. Um I want to just kind of wrap up with, you know, just give you the, the opportunity to say, now, how do people find you, connect with you? Uh, because you've dropped so many nuggets. I, I've got a whole page of notes here that I want, I need to go back over just to uh, kind of put out with, we'll, we'll make sure this is available on the replay, but I want to make sure that people know what you're saying. Cause you're dropping some great, really great wisdom here. And, you know, I, I, I really love the, you know, the, the accountability piece with uh, putting pressure to that goal. That was, that was, that was powerful even for me. So, so thank you. So how can folks get a, get a hold of you? Two, two easy ways. One, go to, go to our website, walterbond.com and download our shark mindset action plan because you got to develop the right mindset because mindset is who you are. Mindset is like your engine in the car. If your mindset is not right, it's going to afflict you. You're not ever, ever going to be able to get to where you need to be. If your mindset is not right. Two, right. Go to LinkedIn, and we have what we call a shark mindset group. We have about 2,000 like-minded individuals. We do virtual uh, receptions, cocktail receptions. We have special guests. And so go to LinkedIn, join the shark mindset group. I'll let you in, okay, unless you don't, you know, unless you look crazy or something. Or and let's say, and go to Walter Bond shark mindset action plan. Uh, we got tons of coaching programs, tons of good um, things we do. I'm real. I'm down to earth. But you know what? My final thought, John, and, and, and what really motivates me, you know, I was like a C student my whole life. You know, I was an average basketball player. I was an average student. And I was just milling around being mediocre to average. 
But just one day, just one day, you know, my mind got right. And I was able yeah. to transform out of what I call the movable middle. And so that's why I'm on a mission, you know, and, and anyone who feels like they got more inside of them, anyone who has big dreams, but for some reason feels stuck, I can relate because I've been there myself. And what I didn't realize early on in life, how much control I had over my situation. <laughs> and I didn't realize how much control I had. And the moment I set goals to create pressure, the moment I got the right kind of coaching and mentoring and support, my my whole life began to transform. And now, you know, I'm a Hall of Fame speaker. And, and now I'm a former NBA ball player. And now I'm a best-selling author. And, and now I sit on corporate boards, but that's not how I began. I thank God for coaching, support. I thank God for great parents. I just thank God for opportunity. I thank God for maturity. And that's where we all, at some point, got to grow up. And the moment <laughs> I made up my mind and got sick and tired of being average, <laughs> literally, was the moment transformation began. Wow. Um, that's just too powerful. The... Um, when you get sick and tired of being mediocre, you will elevate um, and, and and just push into that space. So everybody, give it up for the Hall of Fame speaker, NBA or West Side, South Side <laughs> from Shot Town. That's right. Uh, the Walter Bond. Uh, thank you so much for being on, gracing us with your presence. I'm just so honored. Uh, that you, you're busy guys. I just so honored you would just take some time. You got some really great love going on over here. I can't wait to go back and read some more in the chat. Um, but, but I'm just so honored that you would, you would be on. So blessings to you and your family, uh, and you know, stay safe, but I, I know you're, you're just kicking it. I love watching your growth and, and everything that you're, that you are about, uh, always positive. Um, uh, I'm very in inspired by you. And so thank you so much for being on today. And John, thank you. You know, I met you through your commitment to the National Speakers Association and working with athletes, you know, and, and that's a passion I have because, you know, all athletes, you know, when it's over, you got to transition. And, you know, I, I really appreciate the work that you've done to help athletes transition into this next life and really create, you know, some new goals and some new passion. So when I, I, I've seen you do that for years, and, you know, when you see someone, you know, put their life down and volunteer their time to really help athletes, you know, when you ask me to do something, how can I say no? <laughs> right? You know, you already paid it for. Well, you can. <laughs> well, you know, I, I'm not that guy because, I, I know. you know, I, I believe, believe in karma. I believe in what goes around, comes around. Right. As my mama would say, my mama was a kindergarten teacher. And she spoke kindergarten. It's like a language. <laughs> Every day we left the house, my mama would say, be sweet, baby. Just be sweet. Just get along with people. And my dad would say, go get it, son. Go get it. Those are two core values I grew up with. Be sweet. Be sweet and go get be it. Be sweet. Go get it, son. Go get it. Wow. You, you got, I mean, lots of love coming from you. The amazing thank you. You got uh, Alex B. Hoonan saying amazing thanks. You have Tracy, powerful, needed that. Thank you. You got Lynn saying thank you, Walter John. So really, really appreciate, you know, you being on. We're about to wrap the show up, everybody, uh, because it is the top of the hour. And I want to make sure that you get to dinner if you're on the East Coast. If you're on the West Coast, you got about another hour to go. And if you're <laughs> right here, uh, we are just about to wrap this show up. So thank you, Walter, for being on. Stick around for just a second. I'm going to wrap the show up and uh, we'll, we'll come right back uh, to you and, 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 uh, and follow the show. All right. So everybody, let me tell you, uh, we have... A, that's an amazing show. You need to go back, rewind the tape, put the A-track in, push forward so that you, you can get it back if you know what an A-track is. Uh, up next, join us in the Facebook group, please, the Amputate Fear group. So that's facebook.com slash um, groups with an S slash Amputate Fear. And I'm writing the second book, right? I told you I wrote the first book just because I wanted one done. It was COVID. I wrote, <laughs> wrote a book called Tim Power Stories to Impact Any Leader, Journal Your Way to Leadership Success. But it wasn't a book that I really wanted to write. The, the book I really wanted is really on my kind of life story. So I wanted to make sure that I want to, because all of you kind of know me now, what is it that you would like for me? So put that in the chat group that's over at the Facebook group. So go in there. We're having some really strong dialogues right now. I think today is what, Thursday? So it's uh, we are on uh, Amputate okay. Thursday. So we got that happening. 
Uh, so that's no. So go over there for that. Get rid of that page. Um, remember that you are all the inspirations. Inspiration are really the catalyst to motivation. Motivation needs a catalyst. That catalyst is inspiration. Inspiration is the catalyst of motivation. Motivation in turn causes actions. Actions then lead us to transformational results. And these results, they re-inspire us or they allow someone else that's watching the process to catch the vision. So the command always is to go forth and inspire your world. Go because go is your command. Forth is your direction. Uh, inspire is your vocation. Your, it's your DNA, only you can do this work. And world, it's your sphere of influence. Go forth, inspire your world, everybody. We'll see you next week uh, with another guest on uh, our Hurdles of, Verse of Adversity, Inspires and Maximizers of Pivotal Moments. My name is John Register, saying peace out. Later.